If you're under the impression that Bash is a lot like a programming language, you're especially going to think that's the case by the end of this particular lesson. Or specifically, what we're going to do in this lesson is take a look at functions. What a function allows you to do is define a set of tasks, and then you could call all of those tasks all at once by just calling the function. And in Bash, it's, well, pretty much the same idea. So what I'm going to do right now is show you the concept of functions in Bash. So let's just get right into it, and you'll see exactly how useful they can be. All right, so it's time to get started with lesson number 12. In this lesson, we're going to introduce functions. And to do that, we're actually going to brush off the updater script that we've been working on on and off through the series. And we're going to update that script to include functions. So what you'll see is a real example of how functions can actually consolidate the commands that are in your scripts. Let's go ahead and get started. So on my end, I will run sudo and then nano. Because if you recall, we copied our updater script to a protected directory that only root has access to. So I'll type out the path of user local bin. And I call the update script simply update. So here we have the script so far. And this should be the same one from the previous lesson. And again, what I'm going to do is introduce functions into this script right here. Now, what should we actually consolidate? Well, I've mentioned several times before that you should never repeat yourself in scripts if you can help it. And unfortunately, I'm actually repeating myself several times in this script at this point. So we really should go ahead and fix that. So for example, right here, I'm checking to see if the exit code of the previous command is not equal to zero. If it's not, I want to print this message right here. If I go down further, as you can see, I'm doing the same thing again and again. So already you can see that I have this exact same if statement right here three times in the same script. And you know what? That's actually a waste of space. There's really no reason why we should have to repeat the same thing over and over again if it's not different each time we go to use it. And this if statement right here is the same each time. So in order to fix this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the top of the file and right after the variables, I'm going to add a few lines right here. I just want a line break before and after the code that I'm about to write. And what I'll do is create our first function. So what I'll do is I'll call it check exit status. So that's what I'm going to name it. And to create a function, I will actually include two parentheses just like this, followed by an opening curly brace. After that, what I'm going to do is just basically repeat the information one last time, but you'll see very shortly how this is going to help us when it comes to consolidating our script. So again, I want to check the exit status. And if it doesn't make sense what I'm doing, don't worry about it. I will totally explain what exactly is going on right here. Anyway, I'm going to check and see if an exit code is not equal to zero. And if that's the case, I want to do something. And what I want to do is actually print an error message onto the screen. And here I have my first function. I'm calling it check exit status. I have the name right there and I have two parentheses at the end of the name. And then within an opening and ending curly brace, what I have right here is an if statement. And this is the exact same if statement that I have several times in this file right here. So now that I've declared a function, what I'm going to do is actually call the function rather than have the if statements anytime I call them below. So for example, I'll just go all the way down here and I'm going to completely remove this if statement right here. And then in its place, what I'm going to do is type check underscore exit underscore status just like that. Next, what I'm going to do is scroll down here, and you guessed it, I'm going to remove this if statement as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And then right after this command, I want to check the exit status. 
And then let's get rid of this one. And then I'll call the function right there. So what is going on here? What is a function and how exactly did that help us? Well, you just saw how it helped us, but you might not understand exactly what it's doing. And like I mentioned earlier, I named it check exit status. We have the parentheses at the end and the opening and ending curly brace. So at this point, your understanding of a function is that to declare one, you have to have a name, parentheses, and curly braces like I have here. But what exactly is a function and what good does it do for us? A function is actually a really good tool that you can use anytime you may have repeating code. For example, I was using the same if statement three total times within the script. And there was nothing different about the if statements. I was simply checking the exit status every time I had the if statement underneath a command. And since I was doing that a few times, it really doesn't make sense to write that same if statement three times. So what a function allows us to do is write something once. Maybe it's a single command, an if statement. It might even be a very, very long set of commands. But either way, regardless if it's a single command or a dozen, you definitely don't want to type the same thing over and over again. So by declaring a function, you can actually call the commands anytime you want without actually having to type all of those commands again. So instead of typing this if statement right here each time, I could simply call the function. And that's exactly what I did. I declared the function right here. And as we scroll down, you'll see that I'm calling it here. So after this update command runs, I want to check the exit status. Same thing here and here. Now another benefit when it comes to functions is that you only have to change it one time. So if, for example, I had some kind of problem here within this particular if statement, I don't have to rewrite it however many times I'm calling the if statement. I only have to fix it right here. And that makes this script a lot easier to maintain. So definitely write a function anytime it makes sense to do so. You might actually find that your scripts have far fewer lines of code than they would normally. Anyway, let's go ahead and save the script and then I'll minimize it. And let's go ahead and run it. Let's see what happens. And it actually appears to be running. Well, at the very least, I'm not back at the command prompt. I see the flashing cursor, which means that the script is actually running. So if I open up a tab, what I should be able to do is follow the log file. And as you can see, the script is actually running. I'm following the output of the script right here. So nothing has really changed. I mean, yeah, I did create a function and I did call that function three times, but the script doesn't actually do anything different. And that's the important thing here. The script is doing the exact same thing with fewer lines than it had before. So as we go along and we create our own scripts, it's very common that we'll keep refactoring them, improving them as we go along. And you know what? Over time, we will see our scripting skills improve. And while well, creating a function is a great way to improve a script. Anyway, in this lesson, I showed you how to write a function. So what I recommend that you do is actually practice and write your own functions. If there's anything else in the script that you would like to consolidate, you might want to consider if functions might be a valid way of doing that. So there you go. I taught you guys all about functions in this particular episode of my Bash scripting series, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, then please click that like button to let YouTube know that you found this content helpful, which may end up causing this video to land on someone else's feed, and they might end up finding it useful too. Anyway, as soon as you are ready to do so, you could go ahead and move on to the next lesson. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.